Okay guys, so I had it in the oven, and I baked it, and I took it out, and took the excess stitching out, um, trimmed it, and it uh, works pretty well, except that little, just wants to drop, just there, it's still staying, but it scares me a little bit. Um, what I've decided to do, so I'm going to get some, uh, let's see if we can get the light on this, okay, there we go. Um, I'm going to throw some magnets in this, it might be overkill, I don't know. So I'm going to do a magnet here and on the back side, about here and on the back side, and then right up here. So that should just help to pinch this section closed. Um, here, I want it down here because I, I want it to stop this blade uh, twisting this way, because it, it seems to want to go that way quite easily. Um, and then that opens up for the rest of this. So if we can keep that from twisting out, and then keep this one uh, from letting it drop down. Uh, this one's just a extra safety one. Hopefully that should uh, should give us what we need. Um, you'll see I've just put a dimple in here, which is just for this eye. Just helps to grab it there, I guess. Um, but it snaps in place really nicely and, and does hold pretty well. So once we've got <coughs> those bits on, um, we're going to put, I've decided I'm going to use rawhide to do a fillet on this side. So we'll use that around the magnets as well. It'll hold the magnets in place. It'll fill out this where it's, where it's thinner in this section compared to the, the blade section. And then we'll wrap it in the leather and the leather will form around this contour section, which again should give us a bit of extra hold. So, yeah, let's crack on. Okay, so sent off and I bought a few of these magnets. And I've got one 24 mil and a pair of 19 mil. These are strong. Um, So that will hold through my finger. Pretty impressive. So here's the sheath. I'm gonna pop this up here. This on the back side. And you'll see. Quite a nice draw. And uh, just pinches and close just enough to stop any wiggle, which is great, but still uh, draws not too much. That's what I wanted. Okay, so now how do we secure these? Um, we could just glue them straight on. But I don't know how. Mm. The problem with gluing them straight on is we're going to then cover them and then we're going to have lumps underneath here where the magnets are. And I kind of, I don't want that. I don't want this contour either in the finished Piece. So, I've mentioned it before, I'm going to put a fillet in, it's that shape. So I'm just going to cut it out of rawhide, that should bring us up to level here. I'll cut some circles out for these, and they will be recessed in this piece, so that they don't slide around. And we'll just glue this whole piece to here. It shouldn't need stitching, there's no real... Um, reason to stitch it. It's not going to pull out or anything. We're not actively accessing this bit. Um, so it doesn't need to be stitched. So we'll be fine. So let's go ahead and do that.
Okay, so let's have a look at the strap system that we're going to use. You may or may not have come across these buckles. Um, no moving parts, really strong, really sturdy. It's called a Conway buckle. Um, because there's no moving parts, it's less likely to go wrong. Um, they're just really simple, really nice ways of fastening. Um, typically used for bridle wear. You know, for horses and things. Um, but let me just show you how one of those works. So here, see so I have my, my D-ring attached to what, in our case, is going to be the sheath. So a little loop. Uh, did I put, here we go. Now here we've got our strap. This is just an example. Um, strap with some holes in. So we start by, we come through this way, through here, so we're going to choose this hole, this is going to be our the back side that we're going to loop through again, at the front, and say we want it about that long, feed it through, pull it. Now that's not going to come off there, that is good and strong. Uh, and the leather we're going to use for that particular strap is this, it's a, a really lovely English bridle leather, which again is designed for, for horse tack, um, stirrups, reins, harnessy type stuff. I'm not really a horsey guy, but you know, horse stuff that needs it to be strong and really durable. It's the perfect leather for straps and belts um, and this kind of thing. There's practically no stretch in it. It's just, it's just really nice. Buffs up nice and clean. Um, it's going to look great with this. So we'll get the strap cut out of this. Obviously, put some holes in it round the edges, paint the edges, um, and then we'll get it all attached. But the minute, it's time to start putting some holes in here and getting it fixed to the innards. This is, um, this is where it gets exciting. Nearly there. Okay, so we have this, these stitching holes in, these stitching holes in, and our tabs with stitching holes in those. So what we need to do is we need to glue these tabs into place on the rawhide. So here, and I think down here will be a good option. And um, then we need to glue this onto this. So we'll do the front face onto the front face. When that's all dry and set, we'll fold it round, glue the back. Then I can use my diamond stitching all so that once this is all set, these holes will line up we'll just go through this, go through all of it with the awl. And it's the easiest way to get the holes to line up in the backside. Um, yeah, then once that's, we'll stitch that then, and then we'll come back and trim this all down with a knife. So it's all clean. Then I will bevel the edges. Maybe I'll bevel these, this edge, before we start. But I'll have to bevel this edge after I've trimmed it, which will be toward the end. Uh, then we burnish. Mm, well, we'll probably sand that back to make sure we're 
down and flush with this. Actually, thinking about it, I think I'm gonna go ahead and just knock some of that off with sandpaper now. Then we'll come back to it. See so, yeah. it? Then we'll be nearly done. Okay, so let's have a little look at uh, the finished finished product. So you can see we've got the, the fish scales on there with the, uh, the Celtic knot around the edge. Actually, came out pretty nice, nice and plain on the back. My logo over here and the. And the strap we've attached on a couple of different ways. So we've got the the Conway buckle, like uh, I mentioned a bit earlier on. Um, I'm just throwing a keeper on here. So that's just that slides around as you need it. So I've decided to do like a like a braided style attachment here. You'll see this on um, on horses on horse tack. Um, and I've seen it on like the western saddles, different bits and bobs. Uh, I don't know if they use it on the English style saddle. I don't know, <coughs> but it's a it's a pretty way of attaching something without any actual uh, fastenings. Just loops around the uh, the D, and that's that's as strong as houses. That is. Um, yeah, and it, it all just works and it all just looks exactly how I planned it, so I'm quite happy and I think the customer is going to be pretty happy too, so I'm looking forward to getting this shipped off to him and, uh, and yeah, that's how that works. Let's just see that one more time, see how, oh, it's so snug in there. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with that. So, if you've got any custom orders that you uh, you want me to have a go at, um, if you want a quote, get in touch. Drop me an email. Drop me a message on Instagram. And uh, and yeah, we'll talk. This is an example of a custom piece that I've done. Yeah, if you've got a crazy idea, let me know. I'm. Uh, Always up for a challenge. Anyway, thanks for watching the series. It's been a fun one. Um, don't forget to check us out on the website and on Instagram. Um, if you like the video, uh, hit like, hit subscribe, press the little notification bell at the bottom of the, the video there. Um, yeah, look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thanks.